Welcome to YQ Academy Core Java Interview Questions and Answers. 1. Explain about transient variables in Java. In Java, the transient keyword is used to indicate that a variable should not be serialized during object serialization. When an object is serialized, all its non-transient instance variables are saved to a file or transferred over a network, but transient variables are not included in this process. The purpose of using the transient keyword is to exclude certain sensitive or non-serializable data from being persisted. This is commonly used for variables that hold temporary or cookie-like data that doesn't need to be stored permanently or transmitted across different systems. Greater than serialization. When an object is serialized using the object toot stream, transient variables are skipped during the serialization process. They are not saved to the output stream, and are not included in the serialized form of the object. Greater than default values. Transient variables do not retain their values after deserialization. When an object is deserialized using the object input stream, transient variables are initialized with their default values. For example, transient numeric variables are set to zero, Boolean variables are set to false, and reference variables are set to null. Greater than security and privacy. Transient variables are often used for storing sensitive information that should not be serialized. For example, if an object contains a password field, marking it as transient ensures that the password is not persisted or transmitted unintentionally. Greater than optimization. Marking certain variables as transient can improve the performance of serialization and deserialization as it reduces the amount of data that needs to be processed. It's important to note that the transient keyword applies only to instance variables and not to static variables or methods. To mark a variable as transient, simply use the transient keyword before its declaration. For example, 2. Can we serialize static variables in Java? No, static variables cannot be serialized in Java. The purpose of serialization is to save the state of an object instance, including its non-static instance variables, to a file or transfer it over a network. Static variables, on the other hand, belong to the class itself and are not associated with a specific instance of the class. When an object is serialized using the object toot stream, only the non-static variables are serialized. Static variables are not considered part of the object state and therefore are not saved or restored during serialization. When the object is deserialized, the static variables are initialized based on their default values or their values at the time of the deserialization process. If you need to save or transmit data associated with static variables, you would need to handle them separately from the object serialization process. 3. What is type conversion in Java? Type conversion, also known as type casting, refers to the process of converting a value of one data type to another data type in Java. It allows you to change the representation of data from one type to another, enabling compatibility and proper usage of values in different contexts. There are two types of type conversion in Java. Implicit automatic type conversion and explicit manual type conversion. 4. Explain about automatic type conversion in Java. Automatic type conversion, also known as implicit type conversion or widening conversion, is a feature in Java that allows the compiler to automatically convert values from one data type to another without requiring any explicit casting or conversion operators. 
It occurs when a value of a smaller or narrower data type is assigned to a variable of a larger or wider data type. The rules for automatic type conversion in Java are as follows. Smaller data types are implicitly converted to larger data types. Byte is automatically converted to short, int, long, float, or double. Short is automatically converted to int, long, float, or double. Char is automatically converted to int, long, float, or double. Int is automatically converted to long, float, or double. Long is automatically converted to float or double. Float is automatically converted to double. The integral types byte, shut, char, int, long are considered narrower than floating point types float, double. Therefore, when a value of an integral type is assigned to a variable of a floating point type, the value is automatically converted to the corresponding floating point representation. The automatic conversion is safe and does not result in any loss of data or precision. The value is promoted to the larger data type, ensuring that the converted value can be represented accurately. 5. Explain about narrowing conversion in Java. Narrowing conversion, also known as explicit type conversion or casting, is the process of converting a value from a larger or wider data type to a smaller or narrower data type in Java. Unlike automatic type conversion, narrowing conversion requires explicit casting because there is a potential loss of data or precision involved. In narrowing conversion, you explicitly specify the target data type in parentheses before the value to be converted. The syntax for narrowing conversion is Some important points to note about narrowing conversion. 1. The target data type must be a narrower type than the source data type. For example, converting a double to an int is a narrowing conversion because int is narrower than double. 2. Narrowing conversion may result in a loss of data or precision. For example, Converting a floating point value to an integer type will truncate the decimal part, potentially losing information. 3. Explicit casting is required for narrowing conversion to indicate that you are aware of the potential loss of data and intentionally performing the conversion. 4. If the value being converted is outside the range of the target data type, it may result in overflow or underflow. 6. Explain the importance of import keyword in Java. The import keyword in Java is used to include classes, interface, and other members from a package into your code. It allows you to access and use those classes and members without fully qualifying their names with the package name. 1. Simplified access. Importing classes using the import keyword simplifies the access to those classes in your code. Instead of using the fully qualified name e.g. Java, util, ArrayList, you can simply use the class name e.g. ArrayList after importing it. This improves code readability and reduces the need for repetitive typing. 2. Namespace management. Importing classes helps in managing namespaces. Namespaces prevent naming conflicts when multiple classes with the same name exist in different packages. By importing specific classes, you can reference them using their simple names, ensuring that there is no ambiguity in the code. 3. Code clarity. Importing classes explicitly using the import keyword makes your code more readable and self-explanatory. It provides a clear indication of the dependencies of your code, allowing other developers to understand which external classes or packages are used. 4. Convenience and efficiency. Importing classes saves you from having to repeatedly type the fully qualified names of classes from external packages. 
It improves coding efficiency by reducing the amount of code you need to write and speeds up development. This is the end of our Java interview questions. We hope you enjoyed learning with YQ Academy. Until next time, goodbye.